Job 37, we'll begin reading in verse number 5. The Bible says, God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. Boy, you ought to underscore that. Uh, anything God does, we have a hard time comprehending because he's God. He's infinite. We're finite. He's almighty, and we don't even have the strength to get out of bed without his help. Verse 6 says, For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. Well, we found out a little bit about that yesterday, did we not? Likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud. He scattereth his bright cloud and it is turned round about by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still, and consider the wondrous works of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure are thankful for the good singing, the good testimonies. God, we're thankful you hear and answer prayer. Lord, we're thankful you never change. We're thankful the Word of God never changes. Lord, you know I've been on this path called straight some 48 years. I can still go back to the Word of God. It says what it did back then. Lord, we can take refuge and anchor our lives to the promises of the Word of God. Now, Father, we're certainly glad to be able to assemble once again. We pray for those that are working with the teenagers on the other side. You know the peer pressure and the things that those young people face. I pray that you'd hedge them in. I pray that uh, glean from the word of God tonight that they're being taught. May they hide it in their heart. That they might not sin against thee. Lord, protect our young people. There's a devil like nothing better to put a bullseye on their backs and, and pick them off one by one. So we pray that you'd hedge them in and bless them. Lord, help them to anchor their lives to the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, I pray if there's any that haven't been saved, they'd fall under conviction, get saved even this night. Lord, we certainly do pray here in the sanctuary, there be any among us unsaved, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for the saints of God, that, Lord, you'd edify them, that, God, you'd enlighten their minds to truth. Uh, I pray that you'd put things in us tonight, that, Lord, will propel us throughout the week. Lord, as we face this old world and face... Uh, even our flesh and the devil, that, Lord, uh, we can draw strength from the Scriptures uh, and from the things of God. Uh, Lord, it's good to see Brother Watts and his dear wife. And, God, I pray that you'd continue to use him to impact those that legislate uh, here. And, God, I pray many more get saved. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd work in our state, that our state could... Uh, be a, a, a monument to the other states of what a state can do when it's sold out to God. And God, I pray that, Lord, you'd uh, right the wrongs even before you come and sit on the throne of David. I pray you'd start righting the wrongs now by sending revival to churches like ours. We'd see many get saved. God, we'd see our state and our communities turn for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, bless you, this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. Well, thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Amen and amen. Throughout the Bible, God uses natural things uh, to appeal to us, things that we can understand, that we can learn some insight to his uh, infinite uh, uh, understanding, things that we can't understand. Uh, when Jesus walked on earth, he used parables. Uh, he'd use an earthly story to reveal a heavenly truth. Uh, and we find here that Job, in the midst of his affliction, as it's uh, winding down, it's, uh, his trial is about to come to an end, God is, begins to speak to Job. Uh, God didn't have to speak to Job. Uh, listen, God don't have to speak us. Uh, God has, uh, he's the king of glory, uh, and he's bought you and I with a price, uh, and if God chooses to allow affliction to come in 
our life, He has a right. Our life is no longer our own. Uh, we belong to Him. Uh, but I've learned this about God. If He allows anything to come into our lives, it's because He has a reason. And if we're faithful to the things of God, even in the midst of adversity, one day there'll be a reward. Uh, and here God begins to speak to Job again. He didn't have to. He chooses to enlighten Job why it was good. God that brought Job up uh, uh, before the devil and allowed the devil to inflict all the uh, uh, punishment and all the pain and all the uh, uh, trials and tragedy in Job's life. Uh, and God begins to relate to Job uh, in, in only the way that Job could understand. And by the time you get to the end of this thing, uh, Job is humbled. Uh, Job is broken. Uh, uh, Job uh, uh, goes and forgives his friends. Uh, and because of all that, God restored unto Job twice as much as he lost. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, but in this chapter, we find that uh, uh, God uses nature to reveal some things. And in particular, he uses, if you look at what we read, he uses the elements of weather to make sense that the, uh, the things of God to Job. And can I say, I, I began reading this uh, yesterday and got to looking at this, and I got to thinking about weather. You know, because I got up yesterday morning to a great surprise, snow everywhere. First thing I did was took pictures. I sent to Brother Sammy. I said, I sure wish I was back in St. Louis. I mean, I was just there last week. I was driving my convertible one Thursday, and snow is everywhere yesterday. And I got to thinking about nature and got to thinking about these verses. And, you know, in nature, there's all kinds of storms. There's thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. My wife loves a thunderstorm. She wants to open the windows and sit there and watch and listen to the thunder roll in. There's thunderstorms. There's rainstorms. There's windstorms. I don't like windstorms. They do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. There's windstorms. There's snowstorms. We didn't have snowstorm yesterday. We just got a little sprinkle. Uh, but there are snowstorms. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking right now, a few years ago, I had to uh, go to a meeting and uh, got up on Saturday morning, getting ready to leave out to go to a meeting, and we got uh, uh, about 12 inches of snow, and it wasn't getting any better. It's going to be that way, and I had to go just outside of D.C. to Alexander, Virginia, and I start mapping out routes. Uh, 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 and I start thinking, well, if I go far enough down, south and then I can go up the eastern coast uh, and I got to looking at that brother James is going to be 18 hour drive and I'm thinking 18 hours Lord have mercy I'll be late for church tomorrow if I leave right now and I got to thinking about all this stuff and got to looking at things and finally I told my wife I said forget it I'm going the way I know I didn't have a four-wheel drive pickup tr truck at that time. I didn't have an all-wheel drive car. I had a front-wheel drive uh, Ford Taurus. And she said, you, you want to drive my Explorer? Go. I said, no, I'm taking that uh, uh, Ford Taurus, and I'm going uh, to Alexandria, Virginia. I'm just taking the way that I know to take. Uh, and Brother Mike, it's an amazing thing. Uh, 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 hardly even got slowed down, drove through a blizzard all the way there, got there, uh, got up to preach Sunday morning, and the pastor, you all know him, Brother Wheeler. Brother Wheeler says, this brother's crazy. He's serious about God. He drove through a blizzard to get here. But can I say that's a snowstorm? And we used to have them a lot more, at least my mind thinks we had them a lot more. When he's younger, we don't have snow like we used to. But can I say, we do get snowstorms. Got to thinking about that, there's hailstorms. They do a lot of damage. Hmm? Can I say, there's lightning storms. They're beautiful, but they can do a lot of damage. Huh? Uh, out west, they have dust storms. Hmm? And uh, boy, I've seen some of them on TV. Boy, that's nasty. There's nothing worse than some dust flying in your eye. Can you imagine being in a dust storm? I mean, that'll remove the paint off your cars. I mean, dust storms. Uh, 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 and then there's violent storms. Storms that take lives. Storms that affect communities and destroy things. Uh, storms like earthquakes happen. You know, earthquake happens and it destroys communities. And then there's volcano eruptions. There was one in St. Vincent here a couple years ago. We helped send supplies down there to help them people. Uh, 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 there's tsunamis that hit. Uh, 
I remember when Christian was little, uh, that big tsunami hit over there in Asia, and uh, 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 they talked about it was going to take up uh, uh, money for the tsunami, and Christian came, and Christian was a tightwad. He didn't know more. He spends money like his daddy now. But when he was young, he was a tightwad. He did not want to spend any of his money, and he came, and he asked his mama if he could have all the money in his bank. He had over $100 in his bank. And he wanted to send that to the kids that were affected by the tsunami. Uh, we knew right then we had a keeper of a boy right there. He was a giving fella and uh, wanted to help them people because he'd learned how those kids' uh, whole lives were destroyed by a tsunami. Uh, 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 aren't you glad we don't have some tsunamis around here? I am, huh? Uh, uh, then there's hurricanes. Uh, and we don't have hurricanes, but we have the effects of hurricanes uh, that have hit the coast and come up uh, uh, through the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, there's tornadoes. We do have a lot of those in our areas. Uh, out west, they have landslides. Uh, 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 whole uh, 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 coastal sides of, uh, of mountains just disappear into the sea. And, uh, 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 and then there's floods, and floods happen everywhere. And, and so God uses weather and weather affects a lot of people's lives. You say, preacher, why? Well, the answer is found in verse 13. He causeth it to come. And I want you to be mindful of this verse. Hits and people's lives are lost. Or next time a storm hits and people's homes are lost. We had a bad tornado hit uh, over summer, you know, up uh, where Miss Renee lives. And you, uh, you always wonder why. Well, here, there's three reasons why God allows these things to happen. He causes it to come, whether for correction. Sometimes God sends it as judgment to wake people up. And every time that New Orleans is wiped out, that voodoo God-forsaken city gets wiped out, and somebody says, well, God might, the judgment of God might be on that city, and then all the liberals lose their minds, and they spend billions of dollars rebuilding it for the next storm. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes God sends them for correction, for judgment. Sometimes He does it for the land. Can I say that if an area has a drought for a long time, it needs water? Sometimes the land has to be purged so the land will grow. Sometimes you've got to cut bushes back for them to bloom again, flowers back for them to bloom. Sometimes God has to purge the land for the help of the land because what man has done to the land by destroying it. And sometimes God does it for His mercy. Sometimes God allows things to happen so He can show His mercy. So we see these things. I'm interested, though, verse number 9. The Bible says, Out of the south cometh the whirlwind. And that's true. We get a lot of windstorms from the south. But then it goes on to say, And cold out of the north. And neighbor, you might as well get used to it because we're just hitting the brink of it. Cold's coming. And those folks I know down south, they say, boy, it gets cold up there. I said, yeah, it does get cold, but there's nothing like when one of them Alberta clippers come from Canada. You get a quick shot of Arctic air that will absolutely hurt your bones. And usually after two blasts of that, I'm ready for winter. But until then, it's kind of like getting in a swimming pool and you get your toes in and it's cold. You don't want to get in. Well, that's kind of how I am until we get them blast. But I'm interested there in that second part of that verse where it says, in cold out of the north. And I want to just give you this little thought, little thought I got on how to know you're getting cold. You know, a lot of times... Uh, uh, we can be reading our Bibles, we can be coming to church, we can be paying our tithes, we can be a witness to the lost, we can do all the mechanical things we're supposed to be doing, but inwardly get cold. Get cold on God. We can do it out of habit. And can I say, when we do things out of habit, it makes us no different than folks who are involved in religion that do things out of ritual. If it's not done from the heart, it's all sounding brass and taking symbol. So how do we know when we start getting cold? Because, neighbor, I've been at this thing a long time, and there are different seasons that we face in nature, and there are different seasons in our Christian lives. And if you're not careful, you can be doing everything right and still grow cold on the Lord 
Your compassion isn't what it should be. Your fire starts to dwindle. And for as long, you'll not be what you should be for Christ. So how to know when you're getting cold? Well, you know you're getting cold when you start putting on a front. Can I say the cold always comes through in a front? They'll say a cold front's coming through. You know you're getting cold when you start putting on a front. When really you don't want to, but you, you do. You know, we all got the nice Baptist handshake and Baptist smile down. God bless you, good to see you. And then the side you're thinking, I can't stand that person. You're putting on a front. Huh? You know, somebody's pouring their heart out to you. I want you to pray for my daughter or my son. I want you to pray for this one. And the whole time your mind is me. My, you're not even hearing what they're saying. But you're shaking your head. You're being nice. I'm telling the truth whether you agree with it or not. There are times we put on fronts. There are times somebody is really uh, appealing to us and our Christian nature. And the whole time we're, we're about as cold on God as could be. And we really don't care. All we want to do is get to the restaurant in time. They're holding me up. Hmm? Uh, you know that you're getting cold when you put on a front. Hmm? Listen, the best actors in the world are not Hollywood. They sit in Baptist churches. Hmm? We're supposed to be compassionate. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to be forgiving one another. We're supposed to be kind-hearted one toward another. We're supposed to show mercy one to another. And a lot of times we really don't care because we've gotten cold. Amen. It happens. Hmm? And listen, you're in church, but you can get cold. You can get cold sitting on a church pew. Hmm? You can get cold standing behind a pulpit. You can get cold. Yeah, cold front comes in, everything changes. And can I say a lot of times they come in very quickly, many times unexpectedly. Our wonderful weathermen that always get it right said we might see little snow flurries. Get up and the whole ground's covered and it's coming down like nobody's business. I'm thinking, well, Miss Nettie said, she said, our wonderful weathermen, how do they keep their jobs? Uh, now listen, when I was a kid, you know, they didn't have 15 degrees of Doppler whatever and they didn't have, you know, this and that. And that. They had a barometer. And they got it right most of the time. They'd go talk to Farmer Brown and say, what's the weather going to be? Well, the caterpillars are pretty thick this year. It's going to be a cold winter. Okay, well, uh, y'all better batten down the hatch. It's going to be cold. It'd be cold. Now you got these jokers on there, and they try to impress you with all their knowledge, and their mouths go, wah, 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 because whatever they say is not going to happen. I don't worry about snow when they forecast it. As we found out yesterday, it's when they don't forecast it, that's when you got to watch out. Can I say that can happen to us? Cold fronts can happen real quickly in our lives. Uh, hey, you can, be, you can come for a revival meeting. I mean, be in a service and God dealt with your heart. You tell God you're going to uh, uh, get more involved and you're all excited about the things of God. Get out on the road, somebody cuts you off and you horn cuss them. You lose everything you just gained from church. Huh? It can happen in an instant. You know you're getting cold when you start putting on a front. Can I say this? You know you're getting cold when you start losing your feeling. I know one thing about being in the cold. I know it's bad my hands start getting numb. And I did not have this problem until I got diagnosed with sugar. And thanks be unto God for that sugar pill they put me on so I can still eat all my Swiss rolls. But listen, I know... It affects me having sugar because my hands get numb quicker. I lose feeling quicker when it's cold. Well, they don't have a pill to keep your feeling in your fingers from getting cold, so I found these gloves last year that you plug them in and they heat up. I hit this button and they heat up, and my hands stay 75 degrees year-round if I got them in them gloves. Kept my fingers from getting numb. There is a way to combat it. Where they sell them, I'll, I'll hook you up after service, all right? All right? Uh, but listen, when you start losing your feeling for people, for sinners, for the house of God, when you don't act like that joker back there acting, you know, I'm excited about being here, this makes my week, you start losing that zeal. 
you know you're starting to get cold. Hmm? Huh? Listen, thank God for the house of God. It's a haven, it's a refuge, it's an oasis in this wicked world we live in. I'm thankful that I don't have to come, I get to come to church. I, but there are times, if you're not careful, you feel like you have to come. You know, you start to get cold. Hmm? Start getting a little numb. Your compassion starts waning. Your compassion for Christ, your compassion for the saints of God, your compassion for sinners, all of it starts waning. You know, oh, I'm starting to get cold. I don't know about you all. It got cold. We turned our furnace on. Hmm? When it starts getting cold in your heart, you need to get close to the fire. Get warm back up. Mm -mm. Could I say, you know, you're getting cold when you start putting on a front, when you lose your feeling. You know you're getting cold when your focus changes. You stop looking outwardly, and you start, start looking inwardly. Let me summarize it this way. When it's springtime, summertime, even early fall time, you know what you do? You want to do things outside. You want to plant flowers. You want to do yard work. You want to get outside. You got things that got to get done outside. When it gets cold, you don't want to work outside. Matter of fact, when it gets cold and you see somebody putting on a roof, I don't know about you, but I would say, God bless them folks up there on that roof today. Huh? Listen, you don't want to work outside around the house, huh? You don't want to dig a ditch when it's cold. You don't even like shoveling snow when it's cold. You don't like being out because it's cold. And you start thinking about doing things inside the house, some projects that need to be done inside the house, and things that you can do indoors. Uh, say the cake, uh, taking the kids to the zoo, uh, all of a sudden you're looking to take them to a museum or something, something indoors. You're looking inwardly, not outwardly. Well, the same thing happens in the Christian life. Instead of looking at souls that need to be saved, instead of looking for somebody that's... Uh, really struggling, you can be a blessing to, a help to, you start looking inwardly. The essence of sin is my right to my claim to myself. And when we get selfish, right. we're getting cold. Yeah, Not only mm, you change, your focus change from outward to inward, mm, when you know you start getting cold when you want to hibernate. Even the scriptures say that God takes the beast and turns them into the den. Can I say that one of the tools of the devil is he wants to isolate us. He wants us to go to a den somewhere so we won't be a witness, so we won't shine for the Lord, so we'll... He just wants us to hibernate, take a nap. There's a lot of people that's asleep on God today because they've gotten cold. They're not alert. They're not focused on the Great Commission and focused on living the Christian life they should be. They just want to ease up, take a nap. The Bible says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Amos 6 1. God help us to realize when we just want to sit down and take a nap, we might be getting cold. Hmm? Listen, Miss Rhonda talked about when we get to go to heaven, that's when we're going to rest. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Now, it's time to work. The night time coming there, no man can work. So we need to work. It's not time to take a nap. Well, you know, your focus changes when you're more interested in sitting down on God than being used of God. You might be getting cold. Not only does our focus change from outward to inward and from we want to hibernate, take a nap on God, but there's also a wardrobe shift. I was looking at uh, my closet. I'm looking at all them golf polo shirts. They're short sleeved, and I'm thinking, time to put them away. Cold's coming. I started looking at my quarter zips and my sweaters, and, you know, I know there's coming today, Brother Brian. Got to get the long johns out and all that kind of stuff. There's a wardrobe shift. And you start getting cold. Throw an extra blanket on the bed at night. You start getting cold. And can I say? There becomes a wardrobe shift when we want to take off the garments of Christ and start putting on our own selfish garments. 
things that appeal to our flesh more than things that appeal to the Savior. Now, I'm not talking about actual clothing, uh, but listen, you can also tell when somebody's getting cold when their dress changes. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. But when we no longer put on the garments of humility, the garments of compassion, the garments that our Savior donned and wore for selfish and short-sighted garments, we just might be getting cold. I got to think about this. Not only does your focus change, you might be getting cold, you lose your feeling, you start putting on a front. But can I say this? I don't know about you, this plays out in my life. You might be getting cold when you find yourself dealing with dryness. I knew last week it was going to get cold. Because when it gets cold, my skin, I turn into an alligator. I don't know about you, but my skin gets dry. I'm talking about bone dry. I'm talking about that, that lotion commercial with the alligator. That's me right there. Hmm? I start getting dry. My skin dries out. Something about cold weather. Skin dries out. Hmm? I turn into dry guy. Hmm? That's what happens. See what made me do? Pick it up after church, all right? Huh? We get dry. You know you're getting cold when you start getting dry. Amen. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you shed a tear? When was the last time you had a tear for somebody that was lost? When was the last time you had a tear for somebody who's out of the house of God? You see, we get dry. Hmm? Isn't it amazing that in 2022, they've got a remedy for everything? You get dry eyes, you've got these eye drops you can put in there and it gives you tears, fake tears. Huh? Well, that's good if you've got a dry eye problem. But there's a lot of fake tears at the house of God, too. Hmm? You start getting dry when it gets cold. Hmm? Matter of fact, I'm sitting here, I, I, I'm talking about it, I started itching. You ever do that? Huh? Remember Brother Jerry Allen preaching on when the chiggers come to dinner? I was itching by the time that message was over. I'm itching right now just talking about getting to shut up, Thad. Who's talking to you, huh? Hmm. I can see a meme coming my way tonight from Thaddeus, huh? Hmm. He only listens to preaching to find things he can send me these goofy memes about. That's all the only reason why he listens to preaching. Every Sunday night I get something. Hmm. They're pretty funny. Uh, but I have to understand my dear brother over there isn't wrapped right, you know. One of them things. But, hey, you start getting dry. Sign you're getting cold. Hmm? You ever been in service where somebody gets up and they're broken hearted and testifying and God's really a blessing and you're sitting there thinking, what should I get done? You might be a little dry. Hmm? Hmm? Might be getting cold. I thought about this. When you get cold, you have difficulty fighting off illness. I don't know if you've already done it. I've already started uh, up in my vitamin regiment, regiment, taking more vitamin C. Uh, Miss Nets and Nurse, I've told you all, this year flu is running rapid. Flu, upper respiratory is going around like crazy. You ought, to, you ought to protect yourself as soon as church is over. You ought to need to go wash your hands. But you ought to start taking some more vitamin C, take a little zinc, take some vitamin D, you know, boost your immune system. If not, you're going to call me up, Brother Doug, I got the gang, I can't come to church. Let me help you something. When you get cold on God, you will get ill. You'll get ill with something. You won't like the preaching. You won't like the way somebody sings. You won't like that you didn't get to do this. You'll get ill somewhere along the lines when you get cold. Folks get ill. Hmm? The Bible says every contention coming forth from pride. When you get cold, you get full of pride. You get ill. You know more than anybody. Your ideals are better than everybody else's. You'd do a better job if you had the job. You just get ill. You know, when you're warm on God, you're just happy to be around where God's moving. You get cold, you get ill. Hmm? And folks get ill. 
It's an amazing thing. You're not outside. You're shut in all the time. You're breathing in germs. You get ill. Well, when you get cold on God, you get ill. Mark her down. So, hey, start taking some vitamins. Start taking some vitamins from the Word of God so you don't get cold. So you don't get ill. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just heard it. I'm just hearing it. Somebody said, Brother Doug, you shouldn't meddle. Vitamins don't work. Well, not if you don't take them. Huh? I'm not a big hallucinant. You know me, I don't like doctors or any of it, but I don't like getting sick. And I started a few years ago when, when COVID started coming, and as much as I traveled, she started putting me on 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And you know what? I didn't get sick like a lot of people did. Hmm? Didn't have to have the jab. Uh, and by the way, it is amazing, two years we didn't have flu. Now we don't have much COVID. We've got a lot of flu. Hmm. You won't even hear about COVID now that the election's over. It's amazing. Huh? It really is. It's amazing how, how all that happens. Uh, Miss Nett's got a wonderful summary according to Miss Nett. The reason we're seeing so much flu in RSV, she's wondering if the jab didn't weaken people's immune systems. Could be. Hmm. Can I say, whenever we listen to somebody other than the Lord, our, our spiritual immune systems get weakened. And you can get cold real quick. Let me say this. I'll be done. A couple of you about ready to pass out on the floor right now. Uh, seeing some ice icebergs and popsicles in the pews as we speak. But anyway... Listen, coldness always begins with fall. We don't go from summer to winter. We always have fall. And this year, fall started out real mild. But you hang on, neighbor, before winter, it's going to get cold. And can I say this? Your coldness spiritually is always a byproduct that you've already started to fall. And you're not falling in love with God, you're falling away from God. And that's when you get cold. It always starts with fall. It always starts with a fall. You start falling out of love with the Bible. You start falling out of love with church. You start falling out of love with with being what you should be for Christ and before long you'll be cold and indifferent on the things of God I have yet in 35 years of preaching have anybody show me in the Bible where when things don't go your way you, you, you quit God it amazes me brother Brian people get sick or they get ill or they have some tragedy in their life they quit God but they don't quit their job I, I, I don't understand it. If I'm going to quit anything, I'm quitting my job before I quit God. Now, I'm not advocating for you to quit your job. If God blessed you with a good job, you ought to be thankful. You ought to work it. You ought to uh, uh, work as unto the Lord. But, hey, if I'm given a choice, quit God or quit anything else, everything else is going bye-bye. I ain't quitting God. He's been too good to me. And I know my breath is in His hand. But it amazes me that when people hit a little bump in the road, they quit God and before long. They're cold and they're different. Don't even resemble a Christian anymore. Always begins with a fall. So I've said all that tonight to ask you this. Are you cold? We just had revival a little over a month ago. You still on fire? Or have you gotten cold? And if you've gotten cold, whose fault is it? Hmm? God help us to not get cold. Or when we start getting cold, we realize we're getting cold, and we get to the great physician and let him warm us up again. huh? Because I don't want to be cold. I want to be on fire for God. Listen, the Lord's coming back. I don't want to limp into heaven. 
I want to go out in a blaze of glory. I want to go out on fire for God. I want to do everything I can while I can to affect people's lives for Christ. And you can't do that when you're cold. And heaven help us to recognize when we get cold. Because it can happen very quickly. It can come from out of nowhere. If you're not careful, you'll be so cold and so away from God so quickly that you don't even realize it happened until it happened. The best way to keep from getting cold is stay by the fire. Stay by the fire. Stay by the Lord. Stick by the stuff. Stay in the book. Stay on your knees. Ask God to continue to throw logs on your heart and keep you warm. Ask God to continue showing you things from the Bible. Ask God to continue to open doors to people you can witness to. You know what will set a fire in your soul quicker than anything? Witnessing to somebody and them getting saved. That will set a fire in your soul. Ask God to open doors for you to be a witness to. Ask God to show you somebody you can be a blessing to, be a help to. Continue doing the first fruits of a Christian's life. And friend, you, you insulate yourself from being cold. If you stop doing any of the things of God, you're leaving cracks for the cold to get in. If you're not careful, you'll just be a popsicle on the side of the road instead of being on fire for God. I won't be on fire for God. Have you gotten cold? Cold started settling in? There is a remedy, and its name is Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we know a natural part of life, winter comes. Lord, if we're not careful, we'll let winter time come in our lives. We'll get cold and indifferent on God. Lord, I've seen great Christians, Lord, get cold on God. Lord, a lot of times it's wrapped around disappointment. God, I pray that you'd help us. I pray you do something in our hearts and our lives to insulate us from the cold. God, help us to take our temperature off and to see whether or not we started getting cold on God. God, I pray that, Lord, we truly get on fire and stay on fire for God in these days we live. Now, bless this time of invitation. Lord, I know it wasn't a salvation message, but, Lord, if there's somebody here you're dealing with about being saved. I pray they'd come and give their heart and life to Jesus. But I pray for the saints of God. Lord, they'd come. Lord, to the great physician, deal with the coldness and dryness in their life. Bless now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.